Hello there and welcome to this vlog of October 2024 and in today's video I'm going to talk about MechWarrior 5 Clans which is actually released this Thursday which is the 17th of October. I think that's when it's released anyway. It's certainly what it says on Steam. I don't know if that's been updated um, but it's, I think, I'm pretty sure it is uh, the latter end of this week. Um, just going to say this right off the bat because I want to set the tone for uh, for this video. I don't think I've ever seen anything more impressive across all of Battletech ever than the trailer that just dropped for uh, for this game. Um, I'm yeah, wow. I was kind of like. You know, I had a good feeling about this because they'd been dropping some like snippets. We'd had some uh, teaser trailers. It looks like they've actually put quite a bit of money on it in terms of like game development and voice actors and story, just in the way that they were setting it up. Like you know, I saw a, like a series of little videos where they were doing interviews with the the voice actors, and that's always a good sign. You know, if a game is confident enough that they're willing to kind of put money to into the the fluffier aspects of the game it probably means they think that it's going to do okay or that you know there's enough trust in it for that little bit of, of extra money uh, it was always a, a big criticism i had of the 2018 battletech game that the you know they kind of you know the game itself is is great but the actual fluff around it um is kind of lacking and what i mean by that in like there's no voice actors really uh the cut scenes are fantastic even and the, they're clearly done on it on like a budget this though mechwary 5 just looks like a full-on movie right i mean the quality and i mean i'm just i'm utterly i was watching it and like wow <laughs> right now before we get into it, because there's quite a bit that I want to discuss here, uh, if you are a casual to Battletech, and um, you know, I probably will title this video like MechWarrior 5 Clans, um, so it may pick up people from the um, the computer side of Battletech or the digital side of Battletech. Uh, this is obviously like a, a pretty law heavy channel. So if you're not that familiar with like Battletech Canon, but you like the MechWarrior games, there are going to be a hell of a lot of spoilers ahead here. So don't watch it. Just stop watching now if you don't want to know what happens in the game. Um, so you've been warned. Um, remember, though, this is kind of a, you know, a, a dedicated Battletech channel. So 99% of my audience will know what I'm going to talk about. I'm just acutely aware because this is something that's slightly more generalist. It may bring in people looking for like reviews of the game or things like that. So, and that's not what this is obviously because I've not played the game yet, but um, just, yeah, keep that in mind anyway, before we continue. Um, so we, first thing to, to say really on the actual trailer itself is uh, if you've not watched it go and watch it um it deals with uh, a, a time in battletech that i know a significant amount about as you would expect from a battletech fan because it's the um you know the, the clan invasion which is one of the absolute if not the most important factor in in all of battletech even though me as a you know, a filthy in a sphere free birth player. Um, I can still absolutely appreciate the poetry and the beauty of that story. You know, like the return of the um, of the Star League, effectively, although they come in the form of the on the guise of the clans, which is what we'll get into here. Um, so yeah, so ultimately, I will be playing this game as who I consider to be the antagonists. Uh, you know, it's like playing a, a World War II strategy game and playing as the Germans or something for me, is this? It's like, just feels wrong. You know, had I a choice, I'd absolutely play the Koreaan uh, or the, you know, the Draconis Combine um, in the, in this actual scenario. Um, but, you know, f fair enough. I mean, this is all about the, the clans and their journey and their story and the new mechs that you get. You know, we've seen like, a plethora of, of new mechs in the um, 
in the game footage that we've seen. So we're definitely getting like you know the Mad Cat, um, the Summoner. Um, I think I've seen like the Shadow Cat in there, the Vulture. Um, I'm sure there'll be others as well. There, there is kind of a core. 20 to 30 mechs that you really do associate with the clan invasion so i'm sure we'll be getting most of those from like light mechs like the ulla uh right up to uh like a you know 80 ton mech like the gargoyle um you do get like the really big hitting mechs in there as well like the warhawks and the direwolves but i've not seen any evidence that they are in this game i don't think um but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens anyway. I mean, generally speaking, the clans are much more prone to play, um, or, you know, to use like heavy mechs um, and medium mechs. They do use assault mechs, obviously, but remember that the clans are quite limited on resource. Like, as amazing as they are, as, as they are, as a fighting force, they don't have like the industrial might of the inner sphere. So, you know, they tend to opt for just like complete utility, uh, which kind of like mechs like the Timberwolf that just get like every drop of usage out of itself, as opposed to the inner sphere who can like make really quirky and bad designs because like, you know, you've got the entire disposal of a, uh, a galaxy and all it's like industrial might that it can, it can give at your disposal. The clans have just got a, very small limited number of planets where they have their industrial base obviously that expands during uh what we're going to do in this game which is operation revival um whereby the clans invade the inner sphere and they go through it like a hot knife through butter so yeah it's going to be um really really interesting to play this i, I have played as the clans before there are certain games where you have to uh, you know, like digital games, obviously on tabletop I've played clans as well, though I sometimes do it under dress. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to do. It's going to be interesting as well that clearly this game has set them up as, um, I suppose, like false protagonists. Like in their mind, they are the good guys, right? But it's like the uh, very famous sketch from, um, oh, what do they call that show? Ah, it's the guys that did Peep Show, which my American audience won't know. Uh, but where the, the the German guys are in the trenches, it's from a, it's from their their comedy sketch skit show, right? From like fifteen years ago, where the the guy in the Nazi uh, uniform takes his hat off with the skull and crossbones on, and he's like, "Hands, are we the bad guys?" <laughs> like you know, it's might it might be what you get um, in this. Like I do expect some of that, and from the trailer that we've just seen, you get your usual horrible antisocial clan behavior like them beating each other up and in a society which is just based completely around uh like doggy dog uh, warrior culture where everyone else is just there to support these like hundred thousand or so warriors who are all um like super soldiers and nuts <laughs> right so it's a i've spoke about clan culture many times i've got many videos on it in terms of how rotten their culture is and how awful they are that's not to say they don't have incredible tech and science. They absolutely do. But it is not a culture that you'd ever want to be affiliated to or be a part of. It's absolutely rotten. Though for, for wargaming tabletop purposes, they are incredible. They're a wonderful antagonist. And, you know, they really lend themselves to this setting because they're just constantly looking to fight and expand. So you can always get a story out of them, which is... What we're all here for, right? When we're kind of playing the games on tabletop or, you know, computer games or whatever else. So, yeah, the first thing then that I'd really kind of drill down into it is just how impressed I am with what story they're going to run here. Because, obviously, we'd got some snippets that we were going to be part of. Uh, obviously, we knew we were going to be running as Clan Smoke Jaguar, who are like the ultimate evil clan, Right? Um, so we knew that in advance. What I was like thinking though, I, I had no idea they'd go for the full story arc for basically from um, 3049 where the clans um, invade the periphery right up until what basically looks, I think they're going to go up to the Battle of Luthien, but we'll find out obviously. So it, 
it's not going to run till the Battle of Tukid, but I am almost certain that Tukid will be a, a DLC at some point, but we'll talk about potentially where this might go in DLC in a second. But I didn't know what they were going to do. I didn't know if we'd just get like um, a group of, of um, smoke jaguar warriors who were just fighting during Operation Revival and you just followed them guys and they might have been on a couple of planets or whatever. Like we I had no idea what they were going to do. We then saw a still of Leo Showers, who is the Ilkhan. Um, just so you, again, if you're new to this, or if you're a generalist watcher, uh, clan culture or leadership hierarchy, they take the leaders out of the, the warrior caste. Um, out of that caste, then, each clan, uh, of which there are many, you get like Jade Falcon, Clan Wolf, Clan Steel Viper, there are like dozens of clans. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, particular game, there will be, they're only going to show, um, I think, six, I'd guess. We'll get the four, uh, like, invasion clans and then the two back backup clans. But Smoke Jaguar, basically, Leo Showers is the Ill Khan, or the Khan of Khans. Uh, so he's been elected by the other Khans to basically lead the, the invasion. Um Underneath him, then, and every clan has this uh, system. There is uh, you know, every clan has its Khan, and then the Sarkhan, and the Sarkhan is like the the deputy Khan, if that's how you want to put it. In this case, uh, the Sarkhan of um, Clan Smoke Jaggy was Sarah Weaver, and she's very much in the video. She is the uh, the black lady with the cool haircut, um, and then Leo Showers is actually the black guy with the like the facial tattoo. Uh, it's very obvious who he is. He's the kind of guy in the cape. Um, it doesn't look like you are playing as, you know, Leo Showers. Uh, though Leo Showers, I mean, at the time of the clan invasion, I think he's like in his mid to late forties. Um, so, and he does pilot a direwolf, so he might rock up somewhere, maybe. Um, again, spoilers. What he is known for in terms of the clan invasion, so he's obviously got a massively successful career before this because he's Ilkhan. But he's known in the clan invasion for basically starting the clan invasion and you know pushing forward with the crusader clans to to basically take terror uh, and then he's also known for getting killed uh, by tyron myraborg um, when they're on the uh, the flagship of the clan invasion and she basically runs her shal shalom shalim i'm never sure you say that into the the bridge of the um of the the clan um flagship and it kills leo showers and that halts the clan invasion that's what gives the inner sphere the respite to then basically retro engineer a lot of this uh, clan technology that they found onto their own mechs and then they're able to kind of sit back and analyze it and then they draw the clans into tukid and defeat them but again that's a story for another time but that's why leo showers is known he, he's kind of his death is what breaks the clan invasion and you know basically leads to their ultimate defeat if that had not have happened there is probably a very good chance that the clans would have made their way directly to terror and have won but because of the way that clan culture is they had to kind of put everything on hiatus while they went back and and formally mourned and decided upon a new leader because there were a load of space weirdos right whereas any other nation would have been like yeah leader's dead burial Let's get on with it. The clans don't do that. Um, and it was their own data culture that basically destroyed them. Uh, or you say destroyed them, but it basically ended their, um, their ultimate objective, which was to take terror. And um, I mean, they call it Operation Revival for a reason, right? Because that's how they thought of it, which was, you know, we're going to go in there and um, take the Inner Sphere back, destroy the succession houses and reformulate the Star League. Um, that's fine, For, unfortunate of all the tens of millions of people that you've killed along the way. Um, yeah, but that's just clan culture. So yeah, anyway, so I've gone on a massive tangent there, but Leo Showers is a really interesting character. Where I am just was blown away by this though, and just in terms of the story arc, it looks like they're going full hog from like literally um, the outbound light, which is the... Uh, the ship that this the Comstar ship that accidentally stumbles across the clans, it then you know they allude to this in um, in the trailer. Leo Showers is then addressing the other 
uh, Cairns at the council, and that's where he's saying we've been discovered. We've got to strike now, preemptively, before the the inner sphere discover us and come and get us and and everything else. Um, again, that's a really like hot take by Leo that the inner sphere would have gone and invaded because it would have taken them years to find out where it was. And I mean, it's like the inner sphere don't care about the periphery, right? Why the hell would they give a monkeys about the clans i mean it would be a source of interest for them but there's not much i mean the technology would certainly interest them but you know it's just a it's a weird thing they're obviously just warmongers and that's what they always wanted so there you are um but it really does look like we are getting the initial invasion of the uh, periphery which is in kind of the northern side of the map um it, Effect, initially they go up against the Kelhounds and pirates and periphery forces and then within like um, a several month period they then start encroaching onto Lyran space and Draconis combi uh, Combine space and Rasselhag Republic space and they take a ton of territory so you know the Clan Jade Falcon take uh, Lyran territory um smoke jaguar and wolf take um well they all take a little bit of everything but they're predominantly for the Russell republic and then smoke jaguar which is what this story is about is how they cut into the draconis combine and the karita or karitans and the karita um more than any other inner sphere power are fanatical um more so i'd say than the capellans the capellans are actually involved in this it's the other end of space uh, or they're not involved directly. And it looks like we're going full hog from that, you know, that initial invasion of the periphery right through to, you know, the massacre of Turtle Bay, which I'll talk about in a second. And then it looks, and again, I can't confirm this because it was a bit lacking on detail in the trailer, but it looks like it ends at the Battle of Luthien, which is one of the uh, huge, like, set, peace dramas of the clan invasion um go back to turtle bay though because that's a very important um event or location within the uh the clan invasion because there is a massacre there and it looks like this guy is going to get fleshed out it's a chap called cordera cordera I'll say that again cordera perez um he is um, I'm not sure of his rank. I don't know if he's uh, like a star colonel. I'm not, not entirely sure. He's very high up. Um, I, for this video, I kind of checked out his um, Sana page and it's very lacking. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this guy because he is one of the great war criminals of, uh, like, say, modern battle tech. It's not, I'm not talking about like a second. Um, succession war level crime that when Battletech happened that was hundreds of years ago I'm talking about this is like omnipresent in the mind it really kind of sets the scene for what the clan invasion and how it's viewed because they basically just level um, an entire planetary well they level a city on a planet um, and then some and it's pretty heinous and obviously the death count is horrific and it sends like shockwaves through the inner sphere that this invasion is not just um, like as the clans would like you to think of it, which is like honor combat, and we're going to minimize casualties, and we're just going to come and you know challenge each world to to combat, and when their best warriors are defeated, we will then put the, uh, the clan flag up and etc. That's not what's going on here at all. Um, they are literally causing like systematic um, total warfare against populations. So really interested to see that and i'm really interested to see how this game spins that if it's going to try and make the clans look like the protagonists there might be some twists and turns um just from the from looking at the video i think there are going to be some significant twists and turns i would imagine that the um the clans that we the other the clan warriors that we are following i think it's presumably going to go from like their junior careers just when they kind of become clan warriors which is obviously a brutal experience in of itself right up until the battle of luthien i would imagine that like this this would be my take on it it's just if i'm looking at this from a writer's perspective they'll do turtle bay and turtle bay will turn the your characters you know the ones that you're controlling against the clans and when you're actually fighting at luthien you might actually be fighting against clan smoke jaguar 
Why do I think that? Well, one, it's the sensible thing to do because it's very difficult to justify the clan behaviour. Um, you know, up to that, up to the Battle of Luthien, they've committed some pretty heinous war crimes and are the aggressor states, right? So, you know, the Inner Sphere is just try, trying to defend itself and its populations at that juncture. But there is one of the last um, frames that we see, and I'm sure that people are talking about this already, but we get a picture of a chap. He doesn't talk, I don't believe. It's just his picture. He's got a moustache and he's got the Wolf's Dragoon logo on his lapel. Now, quick 101 in the Wolf's Dragoons, um, although, again, the vast majority of my audience are going to know this. The Wolf's Dragoons are actually clanners, but they are free birth clanners, which means that they're not the genetically engineered soldiers. They're just like regular people. Um, these regular people, not all of them, actually, that's not true. You've got like Natasha Kerensky in there, who is uh, a true true born. Um, Jamie Wolf, uh, you know, so it's a mixed like bag of people, but predominantly they give them like what they consider old technology so like star league era mechs and they basically put them into the inner sphere 45 years before the clan invasion and just say look just go and do a scouting mission for us and tell us if the inner sphere has changed tell us what they're like tell us what their power is like if the crusader count clans get their way and we invade and they do like a tour de force of the inner sphere, picking up all that intel, making allegiances with people, and very quickly become one of the most powerful entities in the inner sphere. Because what is considered obsolete tech by the clans is considered like revered lost tech by the inner sphere. So they turn up with like several regiments of pristine ancient battle mechs that are just incredible and, and are just a force changing, you know, entity within the inner sphere. But they go native, right? So, um, you know, the vast majority of them, and it's kind of, it's kind of weird how it happens, but the, the clan um, Operation Revival is kind of split into two, right? So you've kind of got, oh, for, sorry, for the Wolf's Dragoons, like the first bit is them debating on what to do. Like, should they join the clans? Should they keep out of it? What should they to, do? The second part of it is when, well, uh, Jamie Wolf basically declares to all the leaders of the Inner Sphere what the clans are, who they are, and what they're about. And at that juncture, then Jamie Wolf basically, oh well, clan, uh, Wolf Dragoons as a whole declare themselves for the Inner Sphere. So they betray the clans and join the side of the good guys, right? Uh, subjective opinion there. But then you have uh, at the Battle of Luthien, which is just like one hell of a big showdown. You know, it's got all the kind of main protagonists and people kind of operating uh, at that time. It's a great like um, piece of like theatre uh, within the, the Battletech universe. And I would just imagine, I think the Wolf's Dragoons, because of the little snippet we've seen, I think that like maybe our clan warriors might fall in with the Wolf's Dragoons and end up fighting on their side against Smoke Jags. Um, that would be my hot take. Obviously, we don't have anything to evidence this or prove it. But I'm, again, I'm just looking at it from a writer's perspective of after Turtle Bay, how do you justify then just going on to fight for um, for Clan Smoke Jaguar if you want us to like the characters? Uh, and the characters do look quite likeable. I mean, I, you, I often think this about the clans. Like if you, you know, you get that with um, even Jade Falcon... Um, you know, if you read like the Jade Falcon books, there are plenty of like characters um, in there who become likable, you know, who end up like fighting at Tukid against Comstar and the Inner Sphere uh, and end up having like glory of deaths. But they can't, you know, you become really like uh, attached to them and you see like the hardships that they have to go through, whether it's like free births getting really discriminated against or whether it's like true bonds who have to fight up that, that system. And if you find someone who's got like a thread of morality within the clans, morality is probably wrong, the wrong word, but a thread of humanity, probably the better way to put it, then you do, they are quite special then. And I get why the, you know, the clans, why some people really do orientate towards them because it is such a unique culture and they are very interesting. Again, from my perspective, um, I just don't like them um i will always be an inner sphere fanboy uh again so i've got mixed feelings about where they've kind of pushed this in in a 
you know, in a narrative sense, because I now have to commit genocide against my beloved in a sphere, basically, when I'm playing this game, which is brutal. But again, I think they will about face this quite a bit and I think like the latter starts the latter part of this story will be very different from the the start of it where you're going to get these really enthusiastic like brutally passionate clan warriors who will change codes that's what I predict anyway uh, let's talk a little bit about DLC then and then I'll wrap up um, and it's I've got to say they've read a really really nice coherent plan with what they've done for Mech Warrior 5 uh, we knew we were getting the clans from the the very end mission of the um, like the core game for Mechwarrior Five, which was a trash fire, not very good at all. But the very last thing that you see is the clan emblem on a well, what I would call a Brian Cash, but I don't know if, if that is what it is. And it's like the clans just put their own technology there. But you go in, find the clan tech, and then basically it has to be blown up, so you don't get like access to it. But when the, there's an emblem on the doors of this cache, which is the clan emblem, you know, the big, uh, like the Star League star, but it's red and it's uh, vertical instead of horizontal. Um, so that's the first kind of impression that you... So that's what I was like, oh, they're definitely going to do the clans at some juncture. The second one is that in the Rasselhag DLC, you come across Tyra Myraberg's father. Uh, at least I think it's his uh, father. Uh, it could be her uncle or something, but I'm pretty sure it's her dad. He's quite... A, prominent character anyway i just uh, i've forgotten you know where he kind of sits within the uh the russell hags uh, like hierarchy but as soon as you see the word you know myra Borg, you're like oh right so his daughter is definitely going to appear in this game and his daughter ends the clan invasion by basically kamikaze in um her shylone fighter uh into leo showers um face basically um which is the end of leo showers as you'd expect um so they've been setting this up for a while is what I'm trying to get at. In terms of like wider DLC, well, I think the if they're going to finish it with the Battle of Luthien, um, the first DLC that we should get for this, unless... I'm trying to think, there are several ways you could do it, right? Like, you might have a... And it's still be in development at the moment, so they won't have decided. They'll need to see how the game does financially. Um, you might be like, right, we'll now switch codes and we'll do the um, the other three. In fact, you, you'd probably be best not doing Clan Wolf, but you might decide to do like Clan Jade Falcon and Clan... Um, uh, uh, my God, the name's just flown out of my head. Um, the bears, the bear ones. Um, yeah, oh, complete brain amnesia there. Uh, the only clan that I like as well, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, but you might decide to do uh, like two like corridor invasion corridors like that. Um, clan Wolf are a weird one because they're kind of they're so powerful and they kind of their corridor kind of intertwines between um the others as well and it's there's a lot of power play going on between like leo showers and ulrich um kerensky at the time so like and he the ulrich's trying to like put the the brakes on this because they really didn't want to invade so again i i don't know if they're the best option to do it they might get like a special dlc at some juncture or maybe um you know something a bit more elaborate but I think just in terms of like the corridors that you could do, yeah, you could absolutely do um, Clan Smoke, uh, Clan um, uh, Jade Falcon. Um, in terms of the other clans as well, you obviously have Steel Viper and Nova Cat in there. Uh, Nova Cat are a, probably actually they are actually my favourite clan um, because they turn against the clans and they really do turn against them as well. They basically side with the Draconis Combine against the other clans, but they are supporting Clan Smoke Jaguar during the invasion, so that might, might be another DLC that you can do. And I think as well, I'd go so far as to say that Nova Cat, not only are they my, the, the clan that I like the most because they betray the clans, but I also like that they um, there's a bit of like weird mysticism about Nova Cat. You know, like their warriors um, have like visions and they're very, they'd be interesting to write for, basically. 
So you could do that in the initial, maybe like just as a tester on DLC, maybe do a couple of those corridors of power, maybe do like a couple of those next year. And then maybe within like an 18, 20 month, uh, 24 month period, that's where you do the Battle of Tukid. So at that juncture, you'll have set up all the, you know, the kind of major clans, um, and you will have then, um, you know, have like the throwdown then on Tukid, which is basically, you know, Comstar versus, um, you know, the nominated clans. And and that would be incredible. That is such a fleshed out battle as well. You could literally just do, um, you know, like Comstar's journey into that and how they defeated the clans. That would be absolutely wonderful. Um, going on from that then, I mean, if, if you think in terms of how they did MechWarrior 5, like the core game, I think there are like four DLCs for that, maybe five. Some of them are smaller than others, so like you get the uh, Solaris uh, DLC, but some of them are quite big, you know, like you get the War of 3039, for instance. Um, so let's say like there are three DLCs up to um, uh, up to the Battle of Tukid. Are they then going to do that? Bring it full circle and do the destruction of Clan Smoke Jaguar, and I'm going to say they will. I think that will be the very last thing that they do, uh, where basically the Inner Sphere team up, um, everyone, even the the clan, even the Inner Sphere that were not impacted on it, like um, impacted by the clan invasion, like the Capellans, Saint Ives, um, the Free Worlds League, but they become like the industrial powerhouse for the Inner Sphere, provide a lot of the mechs. And then you can kind of follow the Fedcom Alliance before the Fedcom Alliance implodes and we get the Civil War, um, led by um, uh, Victor Steiner Davian and um, Focht from the, you know, from Comstar, and how they basically chase um, Clan Smoke Jaguar down and just obliterate them, basically destroy them, go right back to Huntress and wipe them out. And that will bring the game, obviously, oh, sorry, you know, this game full circle from the the point that Leo Showers um, declares the uh, invasion right up until the destruction of Huntress. It's, it really is a brilliant story um, and there's so much that you can flesh out. I think as I've said there you've got a clear like between three to five maybe th three to six like DLCs that you could potentially do. Um, yeah just it's going to be awesome. I think the, the game looks fantastic as well. It looks it looks a lot more strategical than the car game. So you've almost got like a top-down mech commander view at some points. There's a lot of aerospace assets, which is nice. You might get like artillery, like proper artillery as well, as opposed to the base game where you just have the artillery pieces on the gaming board that you could just go and break. This might be something a bit more elaborate. Uh, more in akin to the, you know, before you sign up to one of the um, missions with the Inner Sphere, you can buy like an artillery hit where you have to kind of stand on a hill and you can just target what you want to shoot. It might be something more like that. Um, but yeah, I am like, you know, I'm so delighted by this because of all the kind of negativity surrounding the um, uh, the Kickstarter recently because of the delays. It's just great to get something that's like, look, it just looks amazing. I mean, I, like, enjoy this, people, right? Because this is as close as we will ever get to a Battletech movie. You know, the cutscenes that we are getting here um, have been, obviously, you know, they will have cost a fortune to do. It's going to look great. One thing that I'd hope, um, you know, and I, I think Battletech can do this because it's such a brilliant IP. I really want something that draws in a more general audience. I know that can intimidate the fan base sometimes because it can lead to a watering down of the, the IP. But this is a game that looks like it could resonate. Like, it looks really impressive. Just pray that it's a massive financial success. And we get... I mean, again, they might go in a different direction on DLC, but I think the blueprint I've given there is probably what the discussions that are going on now... Uh, with the game developers in terms of if this game is a success let's get right to the drawing board capitalize on it and start working on the dlc now and that's what they'll do that's you know if you've got you, you always strike when the 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 iron is hot right especially in um like video gaming which is a brutal market um so yeah i'm just i'm really infused for this um i'm not a mech warrior player either i'm much more into like mech commander and the 
you know, like obviously the tabletop game, as you can see from what's behind me. Um, but I just, I honestly, I will play this game just to watch the cutscenes, even if I'm not like, bothered about like playing shooty games. Um, oh, I honestly can't wait. It's going to be incredible. Um, I'll try and play through it um, quite quickly, and then I'll give a review of it. Um, and I will hopefully then do this as like a, a, a part two to this video and talk about uh, is there anything there that set up any of the DLCs that we might see in the future? And we kind of discuss some of the, um, the, 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 you know, the future paths that it might take from what we've seen from, uh, from the base game. So, yeah, very excited. Uh, looks great. Go check that trailer out. Looks incredible. Um, and on that note, I think I'll leave it there. So it's it's lovely. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing to do a positive Battletech video. I am so happy to do that. It's been like relentless months of just... I, I do a video and it's like just, where's the kickstart? Where's the kickstart? Where's the kickstart? It's so nice to do something positive. So there you go. Anyway, I will leave it there. I will thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully catch you again next time.